Hi everyone, I'm Francois. Thanks a lot to the VidConf organizers for inviting me to speak today. So I'm going to be talking about PreviewJS, which is a tool that I built that lets you um, preview your components instantly directly in your IDE. So here's a very quick preview from uh, PreviewJS.com, but I'm going to be coming back to it with a slightly more detailed overview. But first, I'm going to talk about why I built it and how Vit fits into it and how it makes it possible in the first place. So let's start by creating a React app. And I'm using React as an example, um, but it also works with Vue and Solid. So yarn, create React app, foo. Installing packages, this might take a couple of minutes. I do not have a couple of minutes, so I'm gonna stop that. And instead of yarn, I'm gonna use pnpm, which is a little bit faster. Uh, it's actually what Vit uses nowadays. And instead of create React app, I'm going to be using create vit because, well, this is vitconf, right? So <laughs> why not? pnpm create vit. And this is, well, this is super fast. My vit app, react, app script, perfect. pnpm install. And we're done. Cool. So now we have this beautiful code base that has been automatically generated for us. And it's, the code is beautiful, but the, the actual app is beautiful as well. So let's go and run it. Let's go pnpm dev. Let's open this. And it is beautiful. Look at all this beautiful white space. More importantly, look at the hover effect on the Vit logo. That are as well as the, the React logo, but the Vit logo is even more fancy. I think someone spent a lot of time tweaking this and making it just perfectly sparkly. Anyway, um, so we, we have this counter, right? and this is, this is not for a demo. What we're going to do is when you click the counter too many times, let's say 15 times, we're going to show a, a warning message that tells you, hey, it, it's maybe time to think about doing something else than clicking the button. So let's go in here and say count more than 15. Well, I, said, I said more than 15, yeah. So uh, warning, warning. Uh, you click this too many times. Time to stop. And if I go back to my browser, of course, because the count is 15, it's appearing. But if I refresh, of course, it's not appearing yet. So I click a bunch of times and it's there. Now, let's say I want to iterate on this warning um, element. I want to make it maybe red or something like that. Well, first, I need to click this a bunch of times to show it. And then I can, I can work on it. But you've probably been in a situation before where in real life, when you're, when you're building a website, you have these components, these UI elements that only appear in like very specific conditions, like when you're an admin or, or when you have a specific row in the database that is set. And unfortunately, your test database doesn't have that row. So you need to mock it somehow, et cetera. And, and here, what we can do is we can just hack it around. So we can basically change the main entry point here to be the warning component instead. And this is super hacky. Let's not we're not going to actually do this, but just to show you the idea, uh, let's, let's do that. So let's export this as a component. And then here we're going to do warning. And back to my browser, I can see just this component, which means that now I don't need to click the counter a bunch of times to see it appear or anything like that. I can also just put that side by side with my, uh, my IDE to, to see it appear nicely. And you know, now I can go into app.css and let's say, uh, so this is warning, color red. Cool. Now, this is a terrible idea because if by any chance, by mistake, you end up merging this change into main, into the main branch that gets deployed, then obviously your users are going to have a completely broken experience because all they're going to see is that component as opposed to the app that they're supposed to see. So let's revert this and uh, get it back to what it's supposed to be and find another solution instead. So I'm going to hide this. I'm going to stop the dev server. I don't actually need this anymore. And instead, I'm going to use PreviewJS. So now we can go back to app.tsx and I already have PreviewJS installed here. Uh, and this is available for VS Code, but it's also for IntelliJ and WebStorm. And now I can see that I have this link on top of each of the components. So open app in PreviewJS, 
or here open warning in PrivileJS. If I open app in PrivileJS, what it's going to do is open it side by side within my IDE. So this is like within VS Code. And if I open warning, it will show me just that component. So that means that you can use that to test any component in isolation that you want, as opposed to having to hack, hack around the, the different, uh, the entry point or anything like that. Uh, under the hood, what PrivileJS is doing is it's kind of simulating a fake entry point, doing precisely the hack that I just showed you, but in memory in a way that doesn't mess with your files. So now I can, uh, I can tweak this a bit, can tweak this a little bit. And you can see that it's actually updating as a type, which is slightly nicer than having to wait until I save. And this is possible thanks to VIT's support for plugins. So PrivileJS, of course, is powered by VIT. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about it at VITConf. But VIT has this really powerful ecosystem of plugins, which are based on roll-up plugins. And you can implement like a virtual file system even if you want to. So in this case, whenever I'm, I'm typing on every keystroke that I'm making, it's telling VIT, hey, this virtual file has changed. Now refresh it. And that's what is happening here. Because it's, VIT is so fast, you don't actually see any lag between me typing it and the, the actual changes happening. This is pretty much instant. Now, the, the components that we're looking at right now are super simple. They're basically the constants of UI components because they don't take any props. But let's, let's, take, let's do something a little bit more realistic. Let's say the warning component actually takes a message and uh, an on-click listener. So we do on click equals props on click. Uh, maybe I should pay for GitHub Autopilot now. <laughs> uh, props dot message. Okay. The TypeScript compiler API is used under the hood to automatically detect what are the props of the the components. So if I click on this, it's going to automatically generate message, which is a valid value for properties. And it doesn't actually uh, show you, but under the hood, there's an on-click listener being um, generated as well. If I click on this, you can see this pop-up function prop invoked and, like, every time I click it. Let me show you a slightly more advanced component to, to, to illustrate. So here I have this button component, and it takes children, of course, type, size, and on-click. And here, type is actually one of three values, right? It's either success, error, or transparent. When I open this, uh, it's just going to generate a very, very simple um, version of it. I can actually generate random values for the props like this. And I can also just use the autocomplete. So if I do type, I actually have the choice between these different values. Now, this is the free version of PrivileJS, which is free and open source. There is also a pro version that is paid, and the idea is to ideally subsidize the, the PrivileJS uh, project so that I can spend most of my time working on that instead of working a normal job. And let me show you what that looks like. There's a slightly more advanced props editor. So enable pro. Now, if I open button, I have this editor, which is structured as opposed to the previous one, which is code-based, and I can update, I can add any optional value like this, and I can choose between the different values that are available. And by the way, like the, the props editor can support any, any type of type complexity, you know, nested types, arrays, or all this kind of stuff uh, without really having any issues with that. So if you want the power user experience, the idea is I'd pay for PrivileJS Pro, but otherwise I'm hoping that most people will be able to get, get by fine with just PrivileJS without having to pay for it. So let's disable back um, Pro. And now let me just show you that it does work with Vue as well. I, I, it, it works with Solid as well, but I, we don't have time for everything. So let's go and create another app, uh, which is going to be a Vue app. My Vue app. That's a great app name, I think. No, not React. <laughs> Bad habits. So let's start again. My Vue app. Vue. TypeScript. And I'm going to install the dependencies. Uh, yep. And now I'm going to open that. Okay. 
instead of JSX, of course, because this is a view app, we're going to have these view files. But the way it works is pretty much exactly the same. So we have this link at the top, open app in Preview.js. I can also click on that button here to open, open it in uh, Preview.js. And you can see that it's able to show me the, the page just like it would appear on the dev server. You might be wondering, how does Preview.js work? So I, I mentioned earlier that it does work with Vite under the hood. And what it does is it basically spins up a Vite dev server dynamically. Uh, whenever you, you click on the open you know, component name in Preview.js. So let me go into the, the code base. The, the important bit is this vid manager. And I, I'm not going to, of course, explain how all of this works, but it's just if you're interested in the code and you want to you know, tinker around, you can, you can go in, in the, on the GitHub project and, uh, and try it out. So here we're using, we're calling vid.createServer. And this is not the CLI version of it that you're probably familiar with. This is the, the Node API, where we're dynamically creating a, a dev server. And it's basically passing a fake configuration that is generated automatically for your project with a bunch of plugins that are, um, that are helping PreviewJS to, to work properly. As part of this plugins, one thing I mentioned earlier is the virtual file system, which enables us to have instant updates you know, as you type on every keystroke. And that's the virtual plugin, which is here. And what it does is basically whenever uh, Vit is trying to load a file from your disk, it will kind of intercept that and say, look, instead of loading this content for app.tsx, uh, here's this other content and just use that instead. And that's pretty much what it's doing. So on, on um, every keystroke, the VS Code extension is telling it, hey, this file has changed. And then that the virtual plugin is telling it, hey, reload this file. And the browser actually just uses the, the ESM supports under the hood to just reload that one file and, and just uh, do that super, super quickly within a matter of milliseconds. So yeah, what I'm saying here is that PreviewJS would not be possible at all without Vit. There is a bunch of other stuff, of course, in the project. Most of the, the rest of the magic is about detecting the, the, the components in the code base. That's actually like, you know, fairly easy when it comes to, to view because all you, have, all you know is that there's a view file, therefore there's a component. But in JSX, it's a little bit more complicated to know, oh, I should be showing this link open button in PreviewJS here at this position. Uh, I did write a blog article on that. I'm not going to go into, into the details here, but if you're interested, just go to fwoods.com. That's what, my personal website where you can read more about how that works exactly. And again, this is enabled by the TypeScript compiler API. Now, I've been talking about working on specific components, and there is a much, much better known tool to work on individual components called Storybook. And if you haven't seen it before, let me, let me show you what it is. Uh, so I have this other app called Hungry, which is uh, just basically a food ordering app that I use for demos. And I, I can run Yon Storybook. Uh, and so this is Storybook. This is uh, showing me, you know, for example, different versions of my button. I have a counter with different values in it, a restaurant header, et cetera, et cetera. If you are using Storybook, you might have experienced before the slowness of Storybook. Basically, the more components you have, the slower Storybook will get. And PreviewJS is here to change that. Instead of having to run Storybook at all, if all you want to do is just preview one specific story, you can just stop it. You don't actually even need to run Storybook at all. You can go into your code here, go into the stories, and you can see simply, it actually allows you to preview any of your stories right there directly in your IDE. So, you know, you can look at the default story, the success story, the error story, etc. And you can you can see them update live as well, just like that. Which is I think pretty cool. You could take it one step further and actually if you wanted to just see all of your storybook, there is a feature that I've been working on that is not yet live, although by the time this talk comes out maybe it will be live, uh, which is the CLI version of PreviewJS that lets you see all of your stories um, all at once. So let me go into here and I'm in the CLI. So I'm going to do PNPM dev um, hungry. 
So this is the dev version of Previous, which probably has a few bugs. Uh, yes, it does, because I ran the wrong command. Dev community. That should be better. Okay, so here you can see that I can preview any of the components just like that. There is an initial load, initial uh, load time, but after that, it's pretty fast. Uh, yeah, and of course, if you update the file, you know it will update here um, instantly. I can also not only show the stories, but if I click show components, I can show uh, any component individually. So here I have the the button that we've seen earlier, where I have I can change the size and just preview it however I want. The the next thing I'm about to build, this is probably going to be only in the pro version, but you're going to have the save button that lets you create a new story, or if you're viewing a specific story, you can tweak the props and just just hit save and edit that story. So the idea being that you don't need to really deal with stories files at all manually anymore. All you do is you use privileges to create them and manage them, and you just never deal with that code ever again, which I think should make you quite a bit more productive if you're dealing a lot with Storybook. That's upcoming, hopefully before the end of the year, but I do have an eight month old baby to take care of. So timelines are difficult to, to stick to. That's about it about PreviewJS. So I, I would love to invite you to check out PreviewJS.com to try it out and, and learn a bit more. There's quite a bit of configs that you, you might need. So all of the examples that I've shown you require absolutely zero config, but it's quite likely that if you have a more complex project, like let's say you're using Redux or something like that, you will need to set up like wrappers to set up the you know, React context or set up aliases, or all, the, all this kind of stuff. So all of that is documented on the website. That's about it. Thank you so much for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. See ya.